Hey, you ever been to Chancellor Park? That's where I live. My name is Tavin Dillard, and I live in a trailer park called Chancellor Park, and I mow lawns. I'd like to introduce you to my town. I've been making YouTube's videos since about 2006, and then I've transitioned over to other platforms like the TikToks and the whatnot. But here on this podcast, I'd like to clue you into what's going on with me here lately. And this is like a pre-introduction. Now I'm going to send it off to myself for the real introduction. I'm glad you joined me. Bink, bink. Well, welcome to the Tabby Dillard Podcast, y'all guys. This is Season 2, Episodes 4. Now, what that mean is, in this season of the podcast, we done had three episodes. And then what that mean before that is that there's a whole season before this one. And the way that go is that there's 16 episodes in that season. So quick math is going to tell you, well, I shouldn't put myself in a corner like that away. Uh, medium size, or slow math, I guess. 16 plus... 19. There have been 19 podcast episodes of the Tavin Dillard podcast before this very podcast right now that you're listening to with your ears because it's like a radio show. So your ears is doing all the work on this thing. Uh, that's what you got. You got to listen to it because it ain't a video. It ain't a picture. It ain't a flip book. It ain't nothing that you seeing, but you imagining what it is. So you are doing a little work putting the pictures together in your head based on what your ears told you. If that's how that works. So just to explain it to you that way is the way the best I could do. So if you want to catch up, if this is your first time being on Tavin and Dillard podcast, first of all, welcome. I sure appreciate you, appreciate you listening to me because uh, then that means I ain't just doing this. Uh, you ain't talking to myself, you know, and that's that's kind of a big deal. Uh, but you could pause this thing or whatever you do in the interweb world uh, to go back to listen to these other ones. And I'll be here waiting for you. We all will be. We're just going to wait on you. So take your time catch up kind of thing but uh we uh we enter the winter league adult softball season that's what i'm doing right now uh in a podcast just kind of walking you through it it to me honestly y'all guys it feels a little more casual than the fall and the spring seasons uh they ain't done a winter league in a number of years but they decided to uh right now and, and it goes i guess till february i don't know if it it reaches into march a little bit but uh, it's been pretty fun, but it kind of feel like a, more like a pickup game than real games. But they are real games. We're keeping score. Everybody got on uniforms, the concession stands, like in full swing. So I ain't trying to say like, oh, we, this ain't real. It's real, but it just feel a little different. Maybe because it's so cold out, and I don't know. But it's going good. We're three games into the season. I already told you all about the first two games, you know, in the other podcast episodes. And I'm going to be giving an update on game three in this podcast episode, you know, that just happened this week. So we're going to get to that. But first of all, what in the world is new with you? Like I said, I appreciate you joining me on a podcast. You didn't have to. You know, I didn't get you up in this morning, stick them, them earphones in your ears and say, you listen here. You listen to this. You know, I didn't make you, uh, and you didn't have to. You got up, and you chose to do this, and that's a big deal to me. I sure enjoy doing it. It's a hoot for me. I hope uh, I hope it's a hoot for you. Y'all heard I teamed up with the Bee House Honey for quite a sweet experience. That Bee House Honey, here's the deal. Now, it's raw, so it ain't cooked, which that's a good thing. Now, if you get a chicken, you want to cook it. But this honey, you don't want it cooked. Comes straight from the hive, strained and bottled, nothing else. That store stuff is cooked so it don't ever crystallize. You know, that's the goal there. But that cooks all the good stuff out of it. This is as natural as you get. I got my own honey jar. Tavin Dillard Honey from Bees. And you can check it at the link in the show notes. I teamed up with Bee House and, boy, it's a hoot. Now, I'm on the Instagrams. If you were there, I, I posted a couple of things on, on uh, Bee House this week. Uh, and you can see that jar right there with my face on it. Well, you get that jar of honey. It's like you have breakfast or supper or whatever meal you you know, you know have and that you put in honey on something. It could go on cornbread. Uh, it goes on all kinds of things. It goes on biscuits. Somebody on the Twitlers this week said uh, they, they dip pizza crust in it. If I remember correctly. So, I mean, there's all kinds of things uh, that go with honey. I ain't got to tell you about that. This ain't your first day around the honey hive. And the honey's from bees. I mean, that's what we call it because, you know, I don't want you to be, well, where's that honey from? Where did, where in the world did that, that honey that, in Tavis jar come from? It's from bees. So that's how that go. And uh, you can check them out at the, the link in my show notes, and, and you can get a jar of my honey, Tavis honey from bees. And appreciate you doing that. Hey, y'all ever heard about Coach Hicks in town? You ever heard me talk about him? Maybe on a TikToks episode or Instagrams or YouTubes. Uh, he was my high school PA teacher. 
He also ran along John Silver's in the next county over. We was all impressed when back in high school he had a nice truck double cab, so you know he's making good money. I mean, you working as a PE teacher and managing the Long John Silvers? Hey, you doing all right. You making some good business decisions the way I see it. Anyways, that fella, now he stay busy. I mean, I don't know where he gets out that energy. And he helps with the life garden in town at the city pool uh, in the summertime. Now he's opened a boxing gym in town. It ain't just for boxing. That's kind of the thing they, they highlight, but they got exercise things where you can work on the strength of your muscles. You know, your uh, quadriceps and your ham straps, your intercepts, your biceps, your forceps. I don't know them all. I ain't a cephologist or nothing like that. But you can get strengthened in all those. And I know you don't just want to work one. You don't want to have just one big old muscle bulg bulging out like the back of your leg or whatever and then and forget them other ones. And like Coach Hicks will tell you about it. Like he know about it. Like I don't know a lot about it. I know I like my arm strength, especially when I'm hitting a soft single to right field, you know. But he know about it. Folks do other workouts there, though. You know, it ain't just boxing, like I said, but that's what he really want to focus on. He'll wear cowboy boots with shorts, and somehow, I do not know how, but it works for him. I mean, he just pulled that off. I, he, you know, some people can do it. And actually, I think he might be the only one that can do it. But anyways, he'll still check in on the Long John Silvers, too, even though he ain't running it no more. He led Meemaw's water aerobics class, too. That was gross to me because Meemaw and Mabel Childers was giggling like they liked Coach Hicks. And that grossed me out. I don't even know why I brought that up. Anyway, so what about Coach Hicks, Tavin? Well, he's been handing out flyers at the city fields about fitness training for athletes. You know, trying to recruit customers. You know, what better place to find athletes in the softball fields? Of course, I use that term kind of loosely because we ain't the most fit specimens down there. i put it to you this way. If you're more excited about the concession stand than the game, you might not be considered an elite athlete. But that's how that go. Anyhow, he been trying to drum up business. He gave some of us a free pass to get down there and try his gym out. Well, Mort Dwydell, he got stubby little legs, but they powerful like a tree trunk. I mean, that guy knows his body. He knows his strengths. Don't mean he's always leveraging that. Like, he got that thing where you can't eat no dairy, that milk trait behageny or a maltose apology. You know that thing where it tear up your guts and you can't. Anyways, that don't mean he won't put a hurting on a milkshake sometimes. Because that's how Mort go. He just says, this milkshake's going to cost me because my wife has to take herself and the kids to a motel because my guts get so tore up. Don't nobody want to be in that house. It stink up the whole house through the hallway into the garage. And she might stay at her mama's for the weekend if the hotel's too expensive. I mean, that's Mort. That's like that. That's just how that go. So I'm down at the Bort Boxing Gym with Mort because we got them free passes from Coach Hicks. And I just kind of step into that ring because he do have a boxing ring. So, like I said, they got the exercise equipment. You get on treadmill or something, but I wasn't trying to get on no treadmill. I was trying to do the boxing thing. I was like, boy, if, it, if the boxing is the main thing, you know, then let me get in the boxing ring and learn how to do this. Get some, you know, get some exercise, burn some calories like that away. You know, you don't go to a catfish buffet and ask for a hamburger. You know, I ain't going to go to the boxing gym and say, yeah, put me on that treadmill over there kind of thing. So... I step into that ring, no big deal. You know, I got my shorts on, and got my socks, my tennis shoes that also double as my old lawn mowing shoes before I got boots to wear for my lawn mowing. Had on a tank top, uh, and then uh, Coach Hicks got that headgear. If you ever seen them little pad, like you pull it over your head, and it's like you got uh, Princess Leia like earmuff things on, but they padded because they protect like your cheek and your ears, I guess, because people like to whack your ears when they box, or I don't know, maybe if you trip or they hit you so hard in the nose that you just fall on the side of your head, then your ears don't explode or nothing. I don't know. I don't know the science behind it, uh, but I know that that's what I had on my head was with them them headgear thing, uh, you know. And then Mort did too. And Mort, boy, he was steady making that headgear work because I don't know if it's supposed to be one size fit all, but he got a kind of a wide head and he's steady just pulling that thing down, just making it work, just stretching that thing around his jowls and getting it around the bottom of his chin, you know, kind of thing. And then it kind of strap under there or something. Anyhow, we in there. I got in there first, you know, and I'm kind of dancing around because I've seen the movies, you know, where them boxers get, you know, I got a little fancy footwork kind of thing. And we get in down in there, and I'm waiting on Mort to get in the, the ring because, I mean, what you going to do? I mean, you can box the air, but, like, you're going to get trained. Like, we were supposed to, the way I understood it, 
the way I understood it is supposed to go. Does that and, I, and we didn't talk about this, so you know that's one of the things you assume something. And you think, well, uh, we're going to a boxing ring. We're going to get up there. We're going to get the proper gear on, and then Coach Hicks is going to say, okay, this is how you do it, like step by step, and kind of train you because he trying to get business and show you that he can get you in shape and teach you something. So I was waiting on him to teach me something. I wasn't just trying to just hop in a in a you know the the boxing ring just swing blindly kind of thing. I could do that at home. So I get in there, and then Mort just kind of step into that ring with them little stubby legs, and he just haul off with a little stubby roundhouse kick. I mean, no warning, no warm-up. He spun around like a top and made quick, hard contact. So hard. Contact with what, Tavin? That's a very good question, y'all guys. I mean, we hadn't got no instructions yet or nothing. It was like turning a kid loose with a broomstick and a pinata. Look out. No plan, no control. Well, unfortunately for me, I was the pinata in this scenario, and Mort landed a solid kick on my upper thigh. The top of his foot just kind of flattened out, and it landed so hard on the front of my thigh, I don't even know how he got his foot up that high on my leg, truth be told. But he did, and it was solid contact. I'm telling you, tree trunk legs. I went down like a newborn fawn on a frozen pond. Coach Hicks hopped into the ring, blew a whistle uh, that's around his neck. Seems like Coach Hicks always have a, a whistle on him. And he was like, Mort, what are you doing? You know, he blowed that thing hard, you know, got Mort's attention. And Mort already got my attention. I was down, you know. I wouldn't, I, the, the whistle didn't stop me. Mort's kick stopped me, and then that whistle stopped Mort. I didn't know if Mort was going to try to finish me off or if he, he knew he'd hurt me or whatever. I mean, we dressed up like boxers. He had them gloves on and that padded headgear, like I said. I guess once we was in that gear, Moore thought he was a pro. And he also thought I was ready just because I was dressed that way. But I was not. So Coach Hicks is hollering at Mort. And I'm on my back holding my thigh. And Mort was saying, I gave him a roundhouse. I thought that was a legal kick. You know, that's what Mort's saying. And I'm just shaking my head saying, I wasn't ready, Mort. Like, you having the wrong conversation here. We're not talking about legal kicks or what kind of kick it was. What you did was take a man down who wasn't even ready. Do you get that kind of thing? And Mort's like, well, I know that now. I know you ain't ready now. I can see that. Coach Hicks has his hands on his hips, and he's standing over me, kind of shaking his head. You know, so you imagine me. I'm just looking up, and I see Coach Hicks, and he got them boots on, and he's just kind of staring down at me, like, shaking. And I don't know if he's mad at me. It's like, what I do? I came down to your gym on your free pass, got in your gear into your boxing ring, and then I got roundhouse kicked to the upper thigh by Mort Dwight L. I don't see how anything's my fault yet. I didn't even provoke Mort. I didn't even say nothing to Mort to get him mad, you know. He just he just seen me in the gear, and I guess the moment took over. But then Coach Hicks turned to Mort, so I was like, okay, he, he going to talk to Mort. He said, Mort, you can't be doing that. you got to wait. I got instructions to give before you haul off and do something like that. And I said, well, I can't do nothing now. I think I'm going to be nursing a deep bone bruise today. And you know we got a game this week, Mort. I mean, so you, you see where this is going, y'all guys. I mean, me and Mort, we play softball together. And a lot of times here, I'm telling y'all about the week of the, how the game went. And this deep bone bruise is really going to put a little damper on what I got to do out on the field, you know, because I'm a base stealer. I'm quick. I'm agile. Can't catch me. I'll steal first base. I stole first base head first, chest naked. I don't care. I'm all about advancing, you know, to the next base, to the next base, scoring runs, pushing folks across the plate, pushing myself across the plate. So then Mort, you know, he nods in his head and, you know, he says, I know, Tavin, I just got carried away kind of thing. Like he knowed about the game. He know we on a softball team. None of that news to him. So our free pass to the gym almost earned me a free pass to the clinic so i had to get out of there i got home mort got a car he got he got you know just like a little four-door and they got my bike in the trunk and so he drove me back to the trailer because i wasn't ba able to even you know do them pedals very well it just hurt so bad you know at the beginning it's one of those things like any injury start to wear off a little bit but i i couldn't i wasn't going i wasn't about to take the bike home and i didn't want to be at that gym no more so back at the trailer park, Mima saw me limping into my trailer. She a couple trailers down from me, and she hollered, What in the world happened to you? And I was kind of, you know, it was nice to hear her show concern. That's my Mima. She care about me. And so I said, I was down at Coach Hicks' gym, and, and before I could even finish that sentence, 
as soon as she heard Coach Hicks' name, she's like, was he down there today? Why didn't you take me down there kind of thing? All concern for me went out the window. Easy, Mima. You still want to know about my leg? She looked at me and turned up to her trailer steps and said, next time you go down there, you need to let me know. And that was it. Her door shut. So she's almost concerned about my deep bone bruise. Almost. But she distracted by the thought of her water aerobics coach. Come on, Mimo. Well, off she goes, and I limp into my trailer and put a sack of frozen peas on my thigh that Mort Dwidell whooped on. He didn't whoop on the sack of peas. He whooped on my leg. But Mort launches dingers, and he uses them powerful haunches to really propel that torso of his when he swings that bat. I seen the damage he can do to a softball, and now I seen what he can do to my thigh. So my mind's already thinking my wheels is turning over here. They turning, they spinning, they thinking I'm going through the Rolodex in my mind of solutions. What's going to happen? How am I going to be once the game rolls around? So I'm thinking, well, I could jog pretty well. It's still a little tender, but I could move. Probably wasn't going to steal no bases, but the other team ain't got to know that. You know, if I got a reputation, if I already got a reputation for stealing bases, they don't need to know that tonight I ain't even planning on it. Now, maybe word trickled in town this week that Tavin got a deep bone bruise by a little stubby Myron Curtis's powerful tree trunk legs landing a roundhouse kick to the top of my thigh with that flattened foot. But I don't know. I don't know how many people know that, and I wasn't going to spread it, you know, like that away. That's a strategy. I didn't want them to have no bandage. We don't want the other team to have a bandage on us. So I get down to the fields, and it's starting to sprinkle a little bit. Not much, but some. Enough to make the fields a little slick. And that kind of stuff affects how you feel the ball. You know how the ball bounces, the attraction you get into infield and outfield when you run in. You tracking down a ball, a pop fly, a horse grounder, sharp hit ball, any of that stuff, you know. So if you ain't careful... This could turn into a little Keystone Cops kind of thing, comedy episode, except it ain't funny when you're the one slipping and sliding all over the place. I was thinking cricket would be working a concession stand tonight, but it's Cheryl Grubbs again. A little disappointing, truth be told, but the bright side is I wasn't going to be distracted thinking about cricket being right there in the concession stand all night, and that's that's a win, you know, because I'm focused on the game because I'm there for the game. I ain't there for, you know, just to see a gal I like. We was the away team, so we bat first. Russell Tucker puts together our lineups. You might know that by now. And he knowed about my thigh injury, courtesy of Morton Wydell. So he put me lower down in the batting order this week. You ever heard of something called happy accidents? That's when something happened that you don't expect or you don't plan, but turns out like some good come out of it. Well, Russell put Rance Farnhart batting leadoff, and who would have guessed? He was all time, buddy. I mean, that fella got on base every time tonight. Rents never did hit a single. He hit doubles and triples all night long. Some of that was because some of them errors in the outfield, you know, because of the slick, wet grass and all that, but we'll take it. I mean, they had to play on the same grass we had to play on. That's a, that's a fair game, the way I see it. Coach Hicks showed up around the fourth inning, and he's trying to talk through the chain link fence at the dugout. I seen Coach, and I asked, what you doing? I was like, what are you doing over here? He said, Tavin Rance is a premier athlete and needs to train at a premier gym. I was like, well, Coach, you need to pump the brakes a little bit. We're in the middle of a softball game right now. Seriously, like right in the middle of it. And Rance is holding a business card. Thanks, Coach. I'll let you know, but Tavin's right. We got to play some ball right now. I was like, I, I did not know Coach. His, his hands, I guess he got he got through the chain link. He, he handed that business card. I don't know if his whole wrist and hand went through or he just got, you know, the cord through and then Rance t- took it from him. But anyhow, uh, Coach coach ain't he ain't resting on, on hustling that business. And I don't know why he's so aggressive with the gym right now, but he is always working on something. Maybe he's looking at upgrading that double cab truck. I don't know. So he did, after me and Rance talked to him, ease up a little bit, took a seat on the bleachers to watch the game just to be a spectator. You know, but he still have a whistle around his neck. Sometimes he just blow that thing, I guess, out of instinct because he's a PE teacher, but can be a little distracting in the middle of a game. But Lottie Jean, Lonnie Jean, he's a game warden. He's an ump uh, over a game. He hollered at the coach to hush up. And I think Coach Hicks wanted to leave, but because he's out recruiting, he held it together, best I can tell. You know, he basically down there not because he's just oh dying to see Bud, Bud's Burger Shed, you know, softball team play tonight, but more like, hey, let me recruit some more athletes. And, you know, if Lonnie Jean ended up kicking him out of the game for blowing that whistle, he's going to lose out on some potential business. That's the way I see it. I put it together in my head away. You know how you look at this over here, and then you look at that over there, and you try to make an equation out of it, say i think this goes with that because of this happening that and you draw what they call conclusions 
you draw the conclusion. That's what I was. But like I said, Rance, he was on fire tonight. That's the good news. The bad news is that other than Rance and JT Whitlow, didn't nobody have much of a night. I had to sit down in the fifth inning. I never did make it back into the game. That Mort Dwidell kick was really acting up on me after I ran the outfield and tried to get on base a couple times. It was just hurting. I had to sit, and Mort was shaking his head. He knows what he did. But I wasn't trying to make it worse on him kind of thing. Shane Grubbs went to the concession stand to see if Cheryl had some extra ice out there. She put it in a plastic bag for me. I just kind of set that thing on my leg while I was cheering from the bench. I had to do it that way tonight. That's just how that had to go. So he was, we was down a guy tonight, and that guy was me. It was Tevin Diller. That's me. I wasn't playing after the fifth inning. But it was still an okay night for Team Burger Shed. We got some runs, not enough to win. Final score tonight was 8-4. to four. We got to four, so that makes us 2-1. and one. That one is the loses and the two's the wins. So we, we I mean, uh, bright side, sweet tea glass half full is we doubled the win. We got twice as many wins as we do losses, and we got more wins than we do losses. We won two. We went into this game undefeated. Now we defeated two and one. Still a better start than the fall league. Will I be back at the boxing gym this week? Probably not. Firstly, I think I need to recover from this deep bone bruise that Mord Wydell laid on me. And B, I ain't got a free pass no more. That's for one week, and I used it for about 40 seconds before I got taken down. So I got to recover. Whole team has to recover. That's just one game. I mean, we still in good shape. I hope you in good shape, too. Stretch out, and if you get to a ring with somebody, you got to know uh, what the rules are. They got to know. I mean, Mort Dwidell just came in there like a top that just cranked up, just ready to go. But I'll tell you this, you know, this ain't going to stop next week. I think I should be good. There ain't no reason this deep bone bruise ain't going to be better by next week. I mean, I got to do the right things this week. But I know you having a good week. I sure hope you are. If you ain't absorbed a roundhouse kick to the upper thigh from Mort Dwidell, then you're doing pretty good. And I sure do appreciate you joining me today on what we call the Tab and Dillard Podcast. Now, I want y'all to know something. If you could rate this wherever you listen to iTunes or wherever you listen to that'd be a big help to me. I know you're busy, and just you taking the time to listen to this is a big deal, but that really helps if you could rate it because that's how people, more people know, oh, this is worth listening to. You know, I appreciate that. That's how you can uh, give me a virtual high five, as they say in Spain. I'm just kidding. I don't know what they say in Spain. I ain't never been there. Uh, I, I guess they speak uh, Spanish or... Spaniard, uh, Spanish, no, maybe Portuguese. Anyhow, check the notes for the links that I mentioned. You know, check out my my new honey. And you can also text me. You can see a link in the show notes. Send me a text this week. Holler at me. Let me know how your softball season's going. Thanks to Bee House. Pick you some up at Tavins Honey from Bees for Raylene and all them. You make the biscuit, don't make the honey. Check them out at the link in the show notes. Thank y'all so much for joining me today. And we'll see you later.